Good morning and a very warm welcome. You are watching Janata Television and this is English Bulletin with me, Yudh Sabhadrai. The top stories first. <music> Government extends lockdown by another week. The lockdown to remain in force till April 15. <music> Supreme Court orders government to increase COVID-19 tests, directs the authorities to come up with relief packages for daily wage labourers. Government appoints Malprasad Adhikari as NRB Governor. This is the second time he was recommended for the same post. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson in ICU, health deteriorating but stable. And tennis stars opt for online battle, decide to play in virtual game to raise funds. And now, the news in detail. The government has extended the nationwide lockdown to contain COVID-19 for the third week. With the cabinet decision yesterday, the lockdown will remain in force in, until April 15. The lockdown was extended upon the recommendation of the high-level committee to prevent the spread of coronavirus due to new threats of the deadly disease, informed government spokesperson Yuvraj Khadiyoda. Sudhir Pashum government has also requested the central government to extend the lockdown after three new causes, uh, after three new cases rather, surfaced in the region recently. विस्तार गरेर 2077 साल बैशाख 3 गते राति 12 बजे सम्मलाई विस्तारित गरिएको छ यो कोभिड को अन्तर्राष्ट्रिय संक्रमणलाई रोक्ने व्यवस्थापन गर्ने भन्ने सन्दर्भमा अन्तर्राष्ट्रिय सीमा नाकाहरुबाट हुने आवागमन रोक्ने र खुला सीमाबाट पनि हुने आवागमन रोक्ने जुन निर्णय गरिएको थियो त्यसलाई पनि 2077 साल बैशाख तीन घंटे राती बारह बजे सम्मा को लागी बढ़ाई ये कुछ है यो संदर्भ में आवागमन रोके पनी ढुवानी अति आवश्यक वस्तु और को ढुवानी यथावत रखने भन्ने निर्णय भाई कुछ है तीसरों से नेपाल राष्ट्र बैंक को गवर्नर में महाप्रसाद अधिकारी लाई नियुक्त करने निर्णय भाई कुछ है during the lockdown, all services except for emergency ones remain suspended and people have been confined to their homes. The operation of domestic and international flights also remain suspended. The existing lockdown was expiring on midnight today, but the government decided to extend it considering the threat of the pandemic. This is the second time lockdown has been extended since it was first imposed for a week on March 24. Three new cases of coronavirus, including the first locally transmitted case were reported in Kailali and Kanchanpur districts on Sunday. Finance Minister Katyora has said that the lockdown measures will be tightened further. The government had already stopped movement of people from one province to another and from one village to another a day ago. In other news, the Supreme Court has issued a mandamus order in the name of the government to expand COVID-19 tests across the nation and increase the number of ventilators required to treat the patients. A division bench of Justice Hari Krishna Karki and Ananda Mohan Bhattarai on Sunday and on Monday issued a nine-point mandamus in the name of government. The court has directed the executive body to increase the number of tests for coronavirus in the nation. The government has so far conducted only 1,645 tests, which is far more from the required test for effective prevention. The nine-point mandamus also includes increasing quarantine facilities to meet the WHO standard, increasing the number of ventilators, prompt management of PPE and other medical supplies for doctors serving in private hospitals and setting up different hospitals for treating patients infected by coronavirus, among others. The top court has also directed the government to come up with effective relief packages for daily wage workers and assist agronomists during the lockdown. The Apex Court, however, has placed a writ petition filed to let in the Nepalese national stranded in the border points under observation. 
People can now straight away inform the police about a coronavirus suspect in the run after the introduction of a new mobile application. A special mobile app named COVID-19 Sathi app has been brought into operation by the government to obtain information about people fleeing the quarantine set by government. The app features a geofencing and face detection technology through which corona suspects on the flee can be traced. The app will also store the facial recognition and phone number of the suspects with this purpose. The app will help approve individuals required to be on quarantine and their address. The app remains functional via its internal messaging system, which can be useful when the telephone service is obstructed. The application can be crucial in our fight against the pandemic, said Minister for Home Affairs Aram Bahadur Thapa. Similarly, a website storing data and information regarding latest COVID-19 development will be now accessible in all province, district and local level uh, starting yesterday. This is Janada Bulletin. We'll be right back after a short break. Welcome back after the break. We continue with other national news. The crematorium at Pashupati Arikat used to receive 25 to 35 dead bodies each day. But the busy crematorium has now turned quiet, thanks to the lockdown imposed by the government. Jeevnath Thakal's job is to cremate people at Pashupati Arikat. He has been involved in his job since a long time. There are 27 others like him. On an average day, each of them get to cremate one dead body for which they get paid rupees 1300. But due to the lockdown, he has been jobless since the last three days. He has not been able to make any money. This has left him wondering for the first time in his career if the number of people dying in the capital has reduced out of the blue. In his 38 years long career, Takal says he has never seen so much serious silence at the crematorium except during curfews and dossi. ते दिन को ये वाला जो तो गार्डन थे वाले चार दिन पांच दिन में ये वाला गार्डन अब ये जन जनता यारों सब ये अपने घर घर में गए अब कारण में वाले मैंने सही नहीं थे ठीक है अंते वाला वाले कम आगे होगी जो तो लाइफ According to the Pashupati Area Development Trust, between 25 to 35 dead bodies are cremated at Pashupati Area on an average day, including at the Pashmeshwar Ghat and the electronic, electronic crematorium. However, ele Executive Director of the Trust, Dr. Kanasham Khatiara, says that the number of bodies has reduced significantly during the lockdown. Not just the capital city, but other crematoriums of the country are also witnessing less number of bodies, he added. घाट में आने सब को संख्या कम भग कौ हमें भी एकीन पत्ता लगन सकता छेन अनुमान कर अनुमान में काठमंड उपत्य का भित्र सवारी दुर्घटना दैनिक एक दुईवटा होने गद इसी सब नाएक राम हो नेस हो मानी नमर् बेस हो हम चाहना ही हो तर दैवी चाहना कसैली टार सकते हैं नियति कस सकते हैं तो नियतिक खेल भि पड़े अभी अलग इसो आई भस्मेश्वर घाटपटी हम जी दैनिक औसत चलने सब थी तो सब को संख्या कम भग विद्युत सप्ताह क्रिया में सब को संख्या कम नहीं most of the private hospitals are almost closed due to the fear of coronavirus. Hospitals have stopped regular services and it is believed that the number of dying at hospitals has also reduced. And now the news from Economic Front. The government has appointed Mahaprasad Adhikari as the new governor of Nepal Rashtra Bank. Adhikari is currently the CEO of Investment Board of Nepal. A cabinet meeting yesterday appointed Adhikari as the 17th governor of the central bank upon the recommendation of a committee headed by Finance Minister Yuvraj Khatiyoda. The committee had recommended the names of Adhikari, Deputy Governor Chintan Mani Shivakoti and former Secretary Kesha Bhatrai for the top post. Five years ago, Adhikari's name was also recommended for the same post along with his 
Producer Chiranjivi Nepal, who retired from the coveted post on March 18 after serving his five-year long term. The then Finance Minister Ram Sharan Mahat had recommended his name in 2015, but the government led by Sushil Koirala picked Nepal instead. A chartered accountant by profession by profession, Adhikari served at the Central Bank for three decades before his retirement in 2015. He was a deputy governor of NRB when the incumbent finance minister Kotiara was the governor of the Central Bank. Time for a short break here at Janata Bulletin. Stay tuned for international news. Welcome back and now the international news. British Prime Minister, who earlier tested positive for novel coronavirus, has been moved to intensive care units as his virus conditions worsened. Prime Minister Johnson was shifted to intensive care of the hospital yesterday after his symptoms worsened, Reuters reported. The Prime Minister, 55, was admitted to hospital in London with persistent symptoms on Sunday evening. Reuters has quoted the Prime Minister's Downing Street officer saying, Prime Minister was in good spirit and still in charge though his condition deteriorated in the early evening and he was trans transferred at about 18 GMT to an intensive care unit where the most serious cases are treated at St. Thomas Hospital in central London. Mr. Johnson has asked Foreign Secretary Dominic Rabb to de deputise where necessary Downing Street added. BBC has also quoted the Buckingham Palace that said the Queen has been kept informed about Mr. Johnson's health. BBC confirmed that Prime Minister Johnson has not been put on a ventilator yet. The United States on Monday branded a Russian far-right group as a foreign terrorist organization, the first time it has targeted white supremacists with tools regularly used against Islamist extremist AFP reported. The State Department said that the Russian imperial movement runs parliamentary training camps in St. Petersburg and has drawn neo-Nazis from across the Western world. This is the first time the United States has ever designated white supremacist terrorist illustrating how seriously this administration takes the threat, said Nathan Seals, the State Department counterterrorism coordinator. You are watching Janata Bulletin and now the latest from the world of sports. The likes of Novak Djokovic and Rafael Nadal could be set to face each other online after the cancellation of Madrid Open tennis tournament announcement. It will run a virtual competition later this month, AFP reported. Professional players will compete in the Tennis World Tour video game to raise money for those struggling in the sport and people affected by coronavirus. La Liga also organized a FIFA football tournament online last month, which raised more than a million euros and was won by Real Madrid's Marco Asensio. After every club picked a player to represent them, the Madrid Open said on Monday it would run an online competition over four days from April 27 to 30 and the organization will soon announce the list of participants. Each male and female winner will decide how much of a €150,000 purse to donate to tennis players currently suffering economically and additional 50,000 euros will all go towards reducing the social impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. We are at the end of Chanata Bulletin and the headlines once again. Government extends lockdown ex by another week. The lockdown to remain in force till April 15. Supreme Court orders government to increase COVID-19 tests, directs the authorities to come up with relief packages for daily wage labourers. Government appoints Mahaprasad Adhikari as NRB governor. This is the second time Adhikari was recommended for the same post. British Prime Minister Johnson in ICU, health deteriorating but stable. And tennis stars opt for online battle decide to play in virtual game to raise funds.
and that's all from the English News Desk for today. You can follow Janata Television and our programs on various social media platforms, including on our website, janatasamachar.com. We urge all our viewers to follow the safety standards and guidelines prescribed by the World Health Organization and the Nepal government to fight the coronavirus. Stay safe. Keep watching Janata Television. Namaste.